everyone and welcome back to my channel and if you're new to my channel then this is a basic drawing course something to do during lockdown and hopefully learn a new skill now we've been doing shapes and this is the final week of shapes it's just going to be the introduction which is diamond shapes and I'm going to kind of link in diamond shapes into drawing cubes and cuboids which we drew earlier so the top and the base of a cube or cuboid incorporate a diamond shape so it is important to know how to draw them so I'm just going to draw a few mine are sometimes slightly off I do apologize And I'm using a ruler just to try and make my lines straighter and also to help making them parallel to each other. Now I forgot to say at the beginning we've had St George's Day this week so happy St George's Day to all of those who are English listening and for all of those who are celebrating the holy month of Ramadan, Ramadan Karim! shaping them in not for the shading but just to show you where the diamond shapes appear and we also have the diamond on the base which I've tried to do in a slightly different colour still don't think the base one is that clear so I'm outlining it red just in these two I'm labeling where the diamonds appear and now on to the drawing so this is what we're going to draw I've called it coffee break and it is a couple of cookies biscuits um, those lovely chocolate ones and a mug of coffee now when you come to draw something like this the really important bit is getting the drawing right and you'll see that I really do labour on doing the drawing, the basic drawing because the shading isn't as important the getting the basic drawing the way it looks correct at the beginning is the most important thing and here because the two shapes kind of overlap a bit I am looking at where they overlap because that is an important way of helping you to get things in the correct proportion and the, and the two biscuits also overlap each other so it's important to get that correct as well I actually chose this subject because it incorporates ellipses and cylinders and also rectangles so quite a few of the things that we've been drawing over the past few weeks and there's even a circle although I didn't actually describe it when I was drawing it in the top of the handle it's not a full circle but you could use a circle in order to make the handle better so here I am measuring out the ellipse for the rim of the mug and again it's still not quite right where it needs but I will keep refining it and the same with the plate the plate is also an ellipse there's always one bit that just doesn't go quite right and you'll always find that and then there's a half ellipse where the liquid is in the mug and you'll notice that I actually didn't put coffee in the mug I put water in it and then I thought well I can actually that's transparent I can see through it so I 
put a dash of milk in. I didn't drink it. Now here, this is the bit that you could use a circle. You could draw around something to make that first bit of circle, but then you can see that the handle actually then takes on a more elongated shape. But the first bit is a part of a circle. See the handle attaches. Now what I did here is a classic mistake. I've, I've actually done it almost side on and you don't ever want to draw a handle of a teapot or a mug side on. So I then have moved it out slightly so that there is a bit of mug showing beyond the handle. If you look at the bottom you'll see and even there that the handle isn't directly kind of 90 degrees to the mug. Now I spent a long time refining all these and mugs have a kind of inner lip which again is another ellipse and if you look at it the ellipse is wider in some points and narrower in others and that kind of gives it a more realistic uh, look. And the plate itself will actually form some sort of shadow upon the mug. My plate was, is dark green, um, so I had to make sure it was darker than the mug. And the mug did have decoration on it, but I was just running out of time, so I didn't actually include the decoration. One thing I did do at fairly early stage was I drew in the highlights because there are some places where the light was reflecting on the liquid or the plate or the mug and I drew those highlights in uh, just because I felt I didn't want to draw over the top of them and needed to reserve the white of the paper. I always spend a lot of time doing my drawing. My drawing takes longer than the actual shading or if I was doing a watercolour, the colouring in because it is so important to get it right and if you see my video that I did last Wednesday of my grandson, I rub out his face about three times because I don't feel that it's right. Um, so you know, you won't get it right first time. Just keep persevering and keep looking. Most important thing with art is to look. Actually, the most important thing with art is to enjoy the process. If you enjoy it, that's the main thing. I forgot to say at the beginning, for those of you who are new, um, we are just using any pencil that you happen to have around the house and just copy paper. If you have a sketchbook, you can use that, but just ordinary copy paper will be fine. Trying to use things that everybody would have around the house. So not just sort of people who've done lots of drawing before, but uh, complete novices. I'd just like to introduce you to the passion that I feel for art and hope that it uh, comes through in my videos and that you get the enthusiasm to pick up your pencils. It is such a wonderful hobby and you just become totally immersed in it and forget all the problems. Even when my mum died, I was doing, I did a painting of her, which was kind of a healing process for me. And 
it was quite emotional doing the picture, but I became so immersed in it and I saw my mum there and I saw her appear in the painting. And so it, it was a very enjoyable, if emotional, time. But I'm glad I did it. And I'd like to say hi to my next door neighbour, Eden, who did a beautiful apple the other day. So keep drawing Eden and you can show me the results of your wonderful work on the Thursday evening clap. Now I'm just carrying on refining the shading all the time, going darker and darker and you keep having to go back in again and again. I've said this lots of times, but uh, don't expect that your first layer of drawing, of shading, will be the correct one and that will be it. You have to keep going over it again and again and again. And it's the same when you're doing a watercolour, you build up the layers of paint. And it's the same if you're doing coloured pencils. shadows for the cookies, the biscuits. And then there's a double shadow, there's a really dark shadow right underneath and then there's a secondary paler shadow. And I've got, I put one cookie upright with the chocolate on the top and the other one has got the cookie side up. And there's lots of like crenellations, I think that's the right word, along the edge of these biscuits. And on the cookie side, you have to remember where the the holes are in the in the actual biscuit itself, which just makes it look more realistic. And the top biscuit is actually forming a shadow on the bottom one. And the plate, remember that because my plate was so much darker than the cookies that I have to make sure that they show up against it. And there's lots of fascinating patterns on the plate, reflections, which help to make it look shiny. I enjoyed drawing the plate and the cookies more than I did the cup actually and it shows. Trying to keep back the highlights that make the plate shine as well. And also if you remember the the place where the object actually comes in contact with the surface it's sitting on is always the darkest and the shadow is always the darkest there. I actually took the photograph after I did the drawing and I noticed there was a really nice shadow for the handle of the mug on the photograph which I couldn't see when I was drawing it so I must have moved the light slightly so my shadow for the mug is a bit incomplete and there's two shadows there for the plate there's, and that's possibly because I've got two light sources but there's a much darker one on the left and then the paler one on the right. Mm -hmm. 
So just keep going back in and refining and refining. And here I am erasing those highlights because although I did try to keep them back, they still did disappear a little bit. So I just had to retrieve them using the eraser. few touch-ups to it and I'm going to show you the photo again and you can see it's just a funny milky liquid and then the final drawing. Thank you for watching, stay safe, stay well, stay home, see you next Sunday, bye!